Ciao and welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago I worked on a small abstract animation and a lot of people enjoyed it so much that they asked me to create a tutorial. So today I am teaching you how to create this torus broken in uh, small pieces that scale down depending on the proximity of another object. Let's dive in. After we open Blender, we need to activate a plugin. So we go into Edit Preferences and uh, inside of Add-ons, we search Fract and we activate Cell Fracture. With this plugin, we will be able to um, fracturize our object. You simply uh, click on this thick box and then you go on Save Preferences. So the, the add-on is activated on your computer. We start uh, adding um, torus. We can select how many faces I would say major segments 60 and uh, minor segments can be around 20 so it's a little bit smoother and uh, yeah the size should be fine as I see like one meter okay we can um, deselect it and we can shade smooth the object. So the first thing that we need to do is adding two materials to the torus. We can call the first uh, outer and uh, the second can be called inner. The materials need to be uh, generated immediately because once you fracturize your object they uh, they will be applied automatically. Uh, for the outer material, we can go in this view, we can make the object like dark, like gray, and we can make it a little bit more shiny. Okay, for now we work with these. The second material is not important because you will not be able to see at the moment uh, later on, we can make it red for now, but later on um, you will be able to see uh, the inner parts. After doing that, we uh, press spacebar to search and we search fracture, cell fracture, actually. After doing these, we need to generate a particle system. The particle system will allow us to break the object into smaller pieces. So we add a particle system and we emit from the volume because we want the particles to be inside. We can emit around uh, 100, 100 is enough uh, particles. We start from frame zero and uh, we end in frame one. So we have all our of our particles in here. We can actually see them inside of our object. We don't need to do anything else. The particles will just allow us to break the object. Now we search uh, fracture, cell fracture, and uh, we use uh, our own particles. The search limit is 100, so we will use 100 particles maximum, so 100 pieces. We need to make sure that the inner material is number one. So if we go to the material, the second, the number one uh, in the line will be the material applied inside of the, um, of the, the, of the br broken object. And after doing that, we start breaking the object. It may take a while. And uh, we are done. So now we can uh, simply remove the particle settings. We don't need them. We can take this torus, we press M, and we create a new collection called original. Then uh, we can hide these. We can select all the other pieces that are the, 
the, the pieces that we broke using the particle system, we press M and we create a new collection called a uh, uh, fracture. So we have uh, the original and the fracture. Uh, if we want to see, um, yeah, as you can see, all the pieces are have a central origin and uh, the original uh, is basically exactly the same, just not broken. So what we need to do now is basically scaling each object individually. We can start generating uh, a system to do that. So we can generate a new collection. We can call these um, elements. And in this collection, we create a um, empty plane axis. We can make this a little bit smaller, it doesn't really matter, and we apply the scale. And then we create a empty uh, plane axis again. Actually, we can do a sphere in this case. We can move the sphere one meter on the x-axis because we know that the torus is one meter radius. We can make it a little bit smaller again and we can apply the scale and we uh, link this uh, null to this um, empty. So control P and keep transform. In this way, when we rotate on the Z axis, this, this will rotate uh, accordingly. Now we need to make sure that whenever we rotate this null object, whatever is close to the null object scales down. And in order to do that, we need to use animation nodes. Animation nodes is an additional add-on that you can download uh, from GitHub, for example. Uh, I will put the link in the description anyway we then activate these uh, going into preferences install and uh, once um, you select the zip file you can install zip files directly you are able to um, use animation nodes and you will see it in here as an additional um, kind of window so we separate our window into two parts and uh, we select animation nodes. Now we create a new uh, node tree. This part may be a little bit tricky, but I will try to explain it at my best. Basically, we start using, uh, we, we add the nodes the same way we add objects to the 3D scene. So shift A, object, and we start adding a collection info. Um, I cannot find it. Okay, collection info, and uh, this will allow us to select which collection that in this case will be fracture will be operated. Then we add an object transform input, and uh, we add the object to the socket. So we transform the inputs of our objects then we search for evaluate fall off we use the list because we want that each single element will be operated individually we uh, use the location of the object and we connect locations to locations the other thing we uh, create an object controller fall off so we can search for object controller controller fall off and these will control or fall off so it tells um, our system what generates the fall off as you can see in here you can add an object this one is called empty so this can be called rotator 
and the one inside can be called uh, uh, folder just to find a name and if you search uh, folder in here basically this will be the object that um, will control our fall off I can start with some values like uh, 0.5 of offset and the tree of fall off you can adjust them later depending on your um, on your project the other thing that we need to do is um, change the object transform output so um, object transform outputs and this is what happens at the end of our uh, operation so I connect the object to the object and uh, yeah remember to save your um, your file okay so in this way if uh, something happens you can always um, go back to this point so we want to activate the scale for our objects and uh, now we want to add a map range so is in math but it's easier to search so map range and we connect the location to the value so map range allows us to um, set a minimum and maximum range uh, in which um, this object will be scaled so I can leave it as it is for now and uh, it will return as a number so we need to create a vector because uh, this is a vector is made of three uh, of an array of three uh, values so what we need to add is a vector from value vector from, from value um, node that uh, we connect and this node basically will allow us to um, yeah, generate a vector from this value now if you rotate this, uh, this object on the z-axis you will notice that uh, whatever is close to our um, empty is full scale and whatever is far from our empty is scaled down we don't want that so we can simply um, use the map range to uh, invert these so the minimum value will be uh, 1 and the maximum will be 0 um, and as you can see now um, it works a lot better another thing is the fall off we don't want the fall off to be so strong so we can simply diminish the width of the fall off and the offset so the offset can be something like this you can actually play a little bit with these and you can actually really adjust the values And as you can see now, rotating the null object, we can um, have the desired value. So for now, the animation nodes are not needed anymore. What we need to do now is uh, animating this object. So let's say that we want this, um, this effect to last for, uh, let's say, eight seconds six seconds first thing first we need to go into this tab and select the frame rate i usually go 25 frames per second because you can do a better calculation of the frames and then we start from frame zero and uh, the last frame should be 25 frames times six yeah in blender you can actually do calculations directly into the um, the various parameters field so we select the central um, new object we press i and we add a frame um, a keyframe for rotation we go at the end of this um, timeline and on the z-axis we add 360 degrees 
and we press I and we add another keyframe for rotation. Now you will notice that if you press play it will start slow, go fast and then end slow. We don't want that because we want to loop this animation so in this window we press T and that we set the interpolation to linear so in this way the interpolation will be constant and uh, and linear now we can start checking the material so if we go into the material tab you will notice that we have this ring with all the materials applied and the inner material is the red that we created before we can actually leave it as it is uh, with these cracks or we can create a mask to to animate it differently I think that we for this time we can um, leave with the cracks but we need to make it a little bit more interesting in terms of environment so we go into the uh, work properties we can actually go into the viewport shape and you will see that there is no light so we select color in the word properties and we add an environment texture uh, at the moment the environment texture is pink because there is nothing loaded in it so we open the environment tab we go into our folder uh, i have a blender folder where i have everything like hdr maps and we select something that can uh, be interesting for our needs. I usually use this great Venice sunset that you can download from HDR High Heaven. We'll put the link in the description anyway. We open the map. It may take a while because usually they are big maps. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, the the object is lit using the light of the map. It's not really what we want because uh, we want the background to be um, in a different color. So we can again open a new window, go into the shader editor and uh, into the word um, tab. We have basically the, the setup that we created in this window. So we have an environment texture, the background and uh, the word output. So um, I use the node wrangler, so I press Ctrl um, T to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. The thing is, you can activate the node wrangler um, is an is an add-on that it's pre-installed and uh, it really speeds up your um, your process. Otherwise, you can simply search your nodes the same way. Uh, uh, like you do usually it doesn't really change too much it's about what uh, kind of uh, process you want to to set up for yourself so what we want to do is using these lights to lit our object but um, using a different color for the background so we shift the we duplicate the background we add a color mix RGB and actually no it's not this but we add a shader mix shader because we are mixing two shaders and uh, we create um, let's say that this can be light blue yeah basically we mix the shader in this way uh, the factor allows us to uh, mix the shader to use basically the one that's on the top or the one that's on the bottom depending on um, the amount that you want to use but in this way you you actually replace the shader and the lights as well so what we want to do is using the background the bottom socket just for the background but uh, whatever uh, is not visible on the camera should be uh, this Venice uh, sunset light. So we simply add an input um, light path 
and we say that if it's camera ray, so if it's seen directly uh, from the camera, it's going to be the background color. If it's not, it's going to be the rest. So another thing that we can do is adding a small um, shade in the background just to make it a little bit different from um, otherwise this background is basically a plain color so we search for a um, um, gradient texture we set it to quadratic i do this because i i usually use this technique a lot so i already have in mind how to how to do it then we um, use a converter color ramp and we connect the color to the color ramp and the color in here now we don't really have a huge control on these because we need to um, change the direction and to do that we need to create a new mapping node so shift d we connect the generated to the vector and we connect this socket to the um, gradient nothing changes because all the values at the moment are um, at zero but we want to rotate um, the y-axis of this texture of 90 degrees so we start having a little bit of variation and we want to move the z-axis a little bit down usually I um, I place my camera parallel to the object and uh, I and I move it up and down in a way that I can see. Another thing that you can do is scaling the, um, the object. So if you do 0.5, for example, or like three, let's see. yeah. The higher the value you put here, the um, more compressed, more scaled down will be the, the shade. I would do like two or even 1.5 should be good enough and uh, the color ramp you can use the color ramp to change the color of uh, the background of your object so uh, let's put this like blue and uh, instead of white we can put like a light lighter version so in this way we have like a variation you can also um, change the position of these uh, sockets uh, Honestly, I usually prefer using um, the mapping node because it allows you to generate a better result, in my opinion. And I can actually move this down a little bit more. And I can change the color of these to a kind of slightly lighter version. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that I would like to do is adding some uh, light inside as if it's like uh, burning of uh, uh, like melted uh, metal fire <laughs> in order to do that we can select one of the pieces we can go into uh, the material you need to switch to the object material of course and we can replace this node with a um, we can say emission node so we remove the node, you will see black. And uh, we add this to the surface. Now, I need to be a little bit closer. Now, in order to, to see the emission, you need to activate some um, tabs in here in the render properties tab. So we need an ambient occlusion that allows us to uh, see more shadows. We need a bloom that basically allows the shiny object to to emit light we can actually activate the screen space reflection we deactivate the half rays and we can activate the refraction even if there is nothing really transparent here that requires it and we can increase the strength of this to three if we change the color we will um, notice uh, that all the objects that are inside will um, be brighter another thing that you can do to add um, variation to these 
um, element is duplicate the emission shader, create a slightly different color, can be even yellow. Use again a, a mix shader where you mix the two nodes. But um, so basically, as you can see, at the moment you 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 are seeing um, a mix between these two colors. But we don't want this. We want to um, to generate. Uh, let's see, object info. We want to add, for example, a Fresnel. So a Fresnel node. Basically, this node will calculate how much the surfaces are uh, bended um, compared to the camera. And uh, in this way, depending on, uh, on the angle that you see, the surfaces will um, show you one or the other color. You can make them a lot different so you can see the effect. So as you can see, this is the final effect. We already have our animation, so um, yeah, the new object um, um, rotating um, makes the, the gap smaller or bigger. The other thing that you can do to see your animation better, you can simply hide the elements because the animation will work. Actually, no, it doesn't. But I mean, don't worry because the elements will not be visible in the in the final render. All you have to do now is adding a camera. If you want, you can add other lights and uh, yeah, moving the cameras around your object to to create something interesting. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, this time I would like to see you what you created following it. I am sure that from this single tip you can create a lot of different effects that you will use in your projects and I'm really curious about what use you will find for this. As usual I invite you to subscribe to the channel and uh, to comment with what you would like to see next. Ciao!